I grew up on a 5,000 acre farm, so farming has always been an important part of my life. And seeing my father, you know, deal with things like drought and having traveled uh, different places in the world and seeing malnutrition, it really inspired me to kind of pursue an education in plant science and be able to use that knowledge of farming and, and science to make plants grow better and, and be more nutritious. So AgGene is an agriculture biotechnology company. We're focused on using advanced technologies to accelerate plant breeding. The initial technology that we developed was done at the University of Calgary. I'm a university alumni. I did a Bachelor of Science degree and I decided to come back after I formed a friendship with Dr. Samuel. AgGene uh, was started 2020, but the original project probably started around 2015, 2016. We've been working on this for several years, but we were actually working on a different aspect. And we ended up finding that when you manipulate this gene, you actually create more protein in the seeds. It, that became super exciting. What we do is we take a single plant cell and then modify that for gene editing. And then we get plants out of that in about uh, six to eight months, check for the edits to make sure that these edits have happened. By end of one year, we should actually have plants with edited seeds. In simple terms, you know, that's what I teach in my class. Think about a surgical team you send into a plant cell. All they're doing is snipping out a few bases in the genetic information, and then the surgical team comes out. So you have no trace of the surgical team in there, but the gene editing has happened. That's something that could have naturally happened too. So that's why gene editing is considered as a non-GM technology. From that point to go into the market could take several years. At least what we would have in our hand is an edited plant line that has higher seed protein content. Our main focus is developing high protein rice. Nearly 2 billion people rely on this crop for 60% of their calories on a daily basis. We increase protein by one person. That's significant nutrition for so many people that depend on rice for all their nutrition. They can't afford the meat. So if we can bump up the protein by a few percentage, it's going to significantly change how we look at crop production and how it can contribute to sustainability. You know, building our prototypes and really seeing a dramatic increase in protein, like when we open the data package on our high protein rice and we see a 55% increase in protein, it's, it's really quite a, a remarkable feeling. We are also putting more protein in peas and we are also working with canola and if we can increase protein, we can easily address the plant protein based market needs. We can also enhance the nutritional value of feed crops. So animals are eating the same food that we do. So right now we're really focused on prototype development. I have a number of our high protein rice plants growing in my garage. I've converted it into like a cruise chamber. It's fully automated and it's nice because I can check them at any time of day. Being able to put more protein in this is, is critical for human health. There's been some recent research that as atmospheric carbon dioxide emissions increase, rice protein might decrease by 20%. So given that it's consumed by so many people, we need to start taking action now and not 20 years down the road. Over the next 18 months, we're looking to get into field trials and deploying our high protein seeds into the environment and being able to assess them in real life scenarios. I think if we in our small way can contribute something to this global challenge, that's what drives me.